Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Faye Collier, and I'm a project manager in NASA Aeronautics. I want to tell you a story today about what we're doing in green aviation and how it will impact the aviation sector or the aviation industry for the next 30, 40, 50 years. I hope to tell you why this challenge is important right now, what the critical challenges are that we need to overcome, the approaches that we plan to use to work toward reducing the carbon footprint, the noise footprint that aircraft make today. I hope to show you those potential impacts and convince you that this is something that we can do. I also want to uh, convey that we have some vision aircraft that we might be able to build and test these concepts, these integrated concepts, to achieve a much uh, more impressive uh, solution than otherwise possible. Before I do that, I want to remind you that the first A in NASA is aeronautics. And we've been working green aviation for almost 100 years at NASA. We've been doing this with our industry colleagues, our university colleagues, students around the country. Um, we've been collaborating on green aviation for a good long time, and we've made very, very impressive progress. And so this is not really something new. We've been practicing this art for a good long time. The new idea is bringing all of this together in a much higher level of integration. Many of you know you work in businesses, and you've seen it work in other places, where we can bring two or three really key ideas together and make a really big difference. And so that's really the story that I want to tell you about today. So this chart um, is a chart that shows um, essentially challenge number one. It is reducing the carbon emissions footprint of aviation. And it's a timeline between 2005 and 2050, um, which essentially is the time frame that's been established by the aviation industry to take on this challenge of reducing the carbon footprint. So we're not going to do it all at once. We're going to take a stepwise approach. We're going to initially employ technology that's in the pipeline right now, technology that NASA, other government agencies, the industry has been working on for now for 10 or 15 years. And it's now ready for introduction. And you can see that first sliver that we take off this carbon growth path is really technology that's ready to go. Um, the second sliver in the, in the uh, chart here uh, below technology is operational improvements. We have some very low-hanging fruit available to us in, in the area of operations where we can uh, improve the way that we fly aircraft in and out of airports and make a big difference in terms of the carbon footprint. It's the last big piece of this sliver, this big wedge that you see at the end there that's called advanced technology development and low carbon fuels where NASA can play a great role for the, for the, uh, for the industry. It's there working with people like Belial, who we saw a little bit earlier, who's focused on low carbon fuels, where we can combine low carbon fuels with advanced technology that's just now entering the technology pipeline that we can make this very, very big difference uh, in the long run. So I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that as I move on. The second challenge has to do with community noise and reducing community noise. Um, I don't know how many people are aware, but local community noise is the number one constraint to the growth of the air transportation system. And so we have to be uh, working alongside with reducing carbon. We have to be cognizant of the noise that this, that this industry um, produces in local communities. And so we're challenged to work these two uh, things simultaneously. Now, these, these are some odd-looking diagrams on this chart. And we call them uh, tadpoles, believe it or not. And on the far left-hand side of the chart, you can see uh, a baseline area, an area on a landing takeoff cycle of community noise. And you can see it's rather large. 
Uh, so the noise that an airplane makes when it comes in and out of an airport is represented by this large tadpole on the far left. The next tadpole, the yellow one, for those that are keeping track of the colors, um, is sort of the best airplane in the fleet. So if we flew the best airplane in and out of an airport, it would, it would project its noise profile in, in this way. And it's slightly less, in fact, it's 55% less um, of an area that's affected than the baseline. So the next three tadpoles that you see there are our goal set, the, the NASA goal set. So we have a near-term, mid-term, and a far-term goal. And if you can imagine what it would be like to get to that far-term goal, that is where we can contain all the objectionable and harmful noise to a typical airport boundary, and so that none of the noise would be getting outside of the airport. So I just, I happen to have two audio clips that I'd like to play to show what the uh, profile on the left sounds like and the profile on the right, and that'll give you some feeling for what I'm talking about. Okay, so that comparison was the far left, the baseline, and the far right tadpole, which is the ultimate long-term goal for reducing community noise. So let me move on now to approaches. How are we going to do this? How are we doing this? What are we working on to make this happen, to fill the technology pipeline with ideas that can both reduce carbon footprint as well as the noise footprint simultaneously? OK, so what I'd like to start with is uh, technologies that go after, uh, that can go toward reducing the carbon footprint. Essentially, it, it is really simple. It's boiled down to like three areas that we need to focus on. And these are probably intuitive to many of you. Drag reduction would be one of those areas. Um, the drag of an aircraft, half of the drag is represented by skin friction drag. And so one technology that we're pursuing is this area known as laminar boundary layer flow control. So if we can keep the boundary layers on an aircraft uh, laminar, then we can reduce the skin friction drag by quite a bit. And if we can reduce the skin friction drag, we can reduce the overall fuel burn of an aircraft. Weight reduction, that's number two. If we can reduce the weight of the aircraft while maintaining uh, safety, which is always paramount, safety, um, we can have a lighter weight aircraft, we can fly that airplane, and we can burn less fuel. So we have an idea for, drag, for weight reduction, and it's a stitched composite that we're working with industry um, that not only is it lighter weight, it might be easier to manufacture, it also has a uh, damage arresting uh, capability because of the stitching. So if we compare this approach to um, the current state-of-the-art in composites, we can expect maybe a 10% improvement in weight reduce the weight, the overall aircraft weight, by an additional 10%. So this is an idea that we're trying to mature and we're trying to get into the technology pipeline. Finally, on the far right, um, I want to mention that we want, uh, and we are, developing advanced engines that, to lower the specific fuel consumption and, it, and integrate those engines into aircraft that uh, can further reduce the fuel burn. As these engines are maturing, we're finding they have larger fans. We're working toward propulsive efficiency here. So we're increasing the propulsive efficiency, reducing the overall fuel burn. However, they become an integration challenge. And so we're working on that integration of those advanced engines on some of these advanced airframes. So let me go on then to community noise and the approaches that we have to take to work community noise simultaneously. Um, when you look at an aircraft, noise components are all over the aircraft. So you've got airframe and propulsion system noise components. Uh, on the airframe side, we're looking in particular at landing gear and the high lift devices. And so we've got the team, the team of engineers back at NASA, in industry, in university, our partners and other government agencies, looking at 
uh, new designs for high lift devices, high lift surfaces, ways to shield or fare the noise out of the landing gear. And that, those components will make a huge difference in terms of the noise that an aircraft makes around uh, our communities. On the um, propulsion side, we have to work fan noise, core noise, and jet noise simultaneously. So we can't just work one source. We have to work in the noise area. We have to work all the noise sources down simultaneously. And then finally, we have this idea called propulsion airframe air acoustics, where for the first time we're starting to work that synergy between the airframe and the propulsion system to come up with an integrated solution that will result in um, lower aircraft noise at the aircraft system level. Okay, so let me take two or three slides to show you the projected benefits of these strategies that we're uh, pursuing. So this chart is commonly known amongst um, the geeks back in NASA as a waterfall chart. And it's essentially modeling the technologies that I've talked about using an aircraft model and running an optimization. And so we build an aircraft model, we calibrate it against publicly available data, and we put these technologies into the model and we, and we run a calculation. So you can see these, this combination of technologies that I've chosen from a large number of potential technologies can make a big difference. And it makes a big difference in conventional airplanes, what I call a tube and wing design, and you can see that on the left, about 43% reduction in fuel burned. If we bring in some of these advanced designs like a hybrid wing body, and I'll show you a picture of one of those in just a minute. Uh, if you recall the first slide, that was a picture of a hybrid wing body. We can get an additional 7% improvement in fuel burn. Now this is mission fuel burn. So this is one mission, okay? And if you multiply this over the thousands of missions that go on in the course of a day, then this can add up to some really big savings in terms of carbon footprint. Okay, I want to use this diagram to set up the next one, which is going to show some potential benefits with respect to community noise. Essentially, what we look at there, imagine a landing takeoff cycle. We've got approach, we've got sideline, and we've got flyover. So we measure the noise at those three locations, and we do a calculation, and we can um, essentially project the noise that an aircraft system will make on the observers. So community noise, it is a way to calculate community noise. So the next slide then shows with the techniques that we're employing, the strategies that we're pursuing, shows a comparison between a modern day uh, airliner to one of these advanced vehicle concepts that we're studying. And you can see at this point in time, and there's a lot of research left to be done, you can see that we have um, reduced uh, these noise profiles, or these tadpoles, by about 66%. So early on, we're already showing significant progress with some of these um, integrated airframe aircraft systems. Okay, finally, I want to summarize in two charts with the fact that we're working with industry, uh, Boeing, Lockheed, Northrop Grumman, to develop future aircraft concepts that are targeting simultaneous reduction of noise and fuel burn. So we've got these advanced concepts that the industry's working on, where they're developing these technology roadmaps, the maturing of that technology, the bringing of that technology into the technology pipeline. And over the next six or, or, or three to six months, we'll have some final results from the industry that kind of confirms that we're essentially on the right track. So with that, I want to leave you with this, with this video of one of these advanced concepts. I hope that in the 15 minutes that you've spent with me, I've been able to show you the why this research is important and that it's important to be doing it now, that there's some real tangible results out there that we can have um, and that we can ultimately make a very large impact on these two environmental challenges. I appreciate your attention. Thank you very much.